Long Lost is a new film from independent filmmaker Eric Bloomquist. He wrote the screenplay for this as well. It stars Adam Wepler, Catherine Corcoran and Nicholas Tucci. Now Corcoran was in Terrifier, which if you're not new to my channel, yeah, you'll know my thoughts on that film. Um, and yeah, Tucci was in Your Next, a film that I've also reviewed on my channel, which I really loved. So yeah, let's get into it. So this isn't my first go around with Bloomquist. He sent me a link to his short film, uh, The Cobblestone Corridor, a few years back, uh, not so long after I'd started my channel up. I watched that film and I was meant to review it for him, uh, but I never got around to it for various reasons. But I did like it. I thought it was very good. It showed an awful lot of promise for a first time director. Uh, and this is his first feature film. So yeah, I gotta say when I got his message uh, asking if I would review this over on Facebook, I was a bit dubious at first uh, because the, the image that popped up was a still image from the film of Corcoran uh, in yeah a, a bathing suit. And I, I kind of, I was a bit A up what's this? And then I noticed Bloomquist's name and it's a name, you know, it's, it's a name that stands out. It's, it's kind of, it's not very common. Uh, so yeah, I remembered that name and I remembered Cobblestone Corridor. So interesting to see him finally do a feature film. And of course I jumped straight into it and, and thought I'd have a look. Now the, the, the good side of this is that I can tell you it turns out to be a very good film indeed. It follows this character of Seth, played by Wepler, who at the start of the film, he turns up at this huge house, a really nice, obviously a rich person's house. Um, and we don't really know what he's doing there. He just kind of makes his way in. And then we're introduced slowly to these two other characters, played by Tucci and Corcoran. Uh, and yeah, it's all a little bit weird. It, it, basically this guy, Tucci, turns out to be his brother, his long lost brother, uh, hence the title. Um, and it, it's kind of, it's not clear as to what Seth is doing here. Uh, is it just because his brother is showing an interest? Does he wanna get to know his brother that he's, he's never really known? Uh, is he going to offer him something? Does he want him to be involved in something? We don't know. So that really is the mystery of the film. Why has he been brought here? and what's gonna be revealed. Now the build up towards those answers, I gotta say is handled really well by Bloomquist. Uh, and he shows a lot of confidence, it must be said. For, now I know he's done Cobblestone Corridor, I know that was done as, as a TV series as well, which I think he directed. Um, but as a first time feature filmmaker, he shows an awful lot of confidence here. The, the way he shoots it, the way he positions the camera, his work with the actors, he gets the best performances out of these actors, it must be said. There's one scene in particular, a dinner table sequence. Uh, it's, it's like, it feels like it's about a five minute scene, but it all plays out in one shot. Now that takes an awful lot of confidence from a director to do that, to, to not rely on coverage, you know, to not get over the shoulders, mid shots, wide shots, this, that and the other, but to say actually no, what this scene calls for is one take, everything in one, uh, and, and it works. Uh, it keeps you focused on all three of these characters at the same time, and you're looking between them the whole time. It's a wide shot on the table, three of them sat there talking to each other, and you're wondering what is the game? What is being played here? What, what are the moves that this uh, brother is, is, is going to make, what's he all about. Uh, so you're reading each of these three characters in this scene and you're, you're not being told to focus on anyone in particular with, as I say, over the shoulder shots, one shots, two shots, this, that, and the other. No, you're being left to decipher it for yourself by being given this wide shot with all three characters in. And I think, as I say, it takes a lot of confidence for a director to know when and when not to do that. It also takes really great performances from actors in order to carry that off because as I say, you're not relying on other cuts, you gotta get this in one and all three do a spectacular job. Of the three main characters, I would say that it's Tucci's Richard who is the most interesting uh, just because you never know where you are with this guy. Uh, is there a decent human being underneath there somewhere trying to get out? Is he gonna soften up as a result of this newfound brother coming in? Uh, or is he gonna keep flying off the handle? Uh, he's, he's very powerful, very rich. He's obviously made his millions or whatever. Um, 
I don't know how many people he may have had to screw over in order to get those millions, but either way, he's a bit of a tough cookie. And like I said, there's a bit of psychosis going on there. And when that comes out, when he just does these random things out of the blue, uh, one, it's believable for this character because they set up set that up quite nicely, but Tucci really makes it quite entertaining because of the way he plays it. One scene in particular when we really get to see this come out in all its glory is a scene in which Richard and Seth have a game of Chubby Bunnies. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what Chubby Bunnies is, it's the game where you stuff marshmallows into your mouth and you have to say the words Chubby Bunnies and still have it be you know, clear. People have to be able to hear that you can say it. Um, it comes right out of the blue. But it's really funny. Uh, the way the actors play it, again, it's genuinely amusing uh, in the way that it's meant to be. But it's also slightly off kilter, a bit, a bit weird, because again, you've got this character of Richard who's a little bit all over the place, a little bit scattershot. I uh, don't know what he's going to do next. Uh, so yeah, his his kind of his reaction to the result of that game of Chubby Bunnies. Like I say, it's it's pretty priceless. This is essentially, as well, a one location film. Uh, now we do have different rooms, so in that sense it's not, but we are confined to this house. You know, it's a pretty big house. There's a lot of room for manoeuvre in there with the camera and stuff, but we are essentially confined to one location in much the same way that Your Next was. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very low budget film in that regard, but it looks, very well done. You know, the production value on it is quite high, it must be said. Some really nice colour correction and, again, some really nice camera work. It makes it feel cinematic. You know, if you put a film like this in the wrong hands, then it can feel more like a student film. You know, oh, I shot it at my, at my uncle's house or whatever. Uh, but no, what Bloomquist does with the camera and with these characters makes it feel like it deserves to be on the cinema rather than just on the stage in a theatre. I like the character of Seth. I think that Wepler does a really good job of making you carry on rooting for him. Um, you know, he, he's, he's asked to cross some lines at times and he doesn't want to. Now, whether that is out of a family responsibility, duty, or a genuine sense of moral obligation, uh, is, is up for you to decide, I guess. But I get the sense that this guy he knows he's right from wrong and he, do, he doesn't want to do the wrong thing. He's, he's there to do the right thing. And in many ways, it's probably one of the reasons why he's not as big a success in the business world as this brother of his. You know, he's, he's made... He's made choices based on moral decisions rather than, uh, you know, monetary kind of basis. That is one of the questions, I guess, that the film does raise, which is that when you have uh, two people who, yes, they come from the same gene pool, essentially, they still have completely different upbringings. You know, it's that nature versus nurture. You've got the, the one child, Richard, who is essentially abandoned, abandoned by his father for the sake of this other brother, you know, the father went off and started up this other family. So he's the one who got nurtured, you know. So the, the, the brother that got nurtured kind of hasn't grown up, I guess, seeking fame, fortune, whatever. He's, he's happy to get by on, on where he's at in life, uh, be, be more creative, I guess, um, and, and be happy with that. Whereas Richard, the brother who was abandoned, has always had something to prove, again, you know. So again, like that, that, that whole nature versus nurture thing, does come into play. If I had one criticism of the film, I think it would have been that I'd have liked those themes or that particular theme to have been explored a bit more deeply. Uh, I feel like I'm digging, I'm doing a bit of digging there to get to that. Uh, whereas I think that there could have been a few more themes that were very clearly dealt with throughout. Uh, that being said, like I say, it's a good little thriller. You don't know where it's going and when it gets to where it's going, you're happy to have taken the journey. It keeps you guessing every step of the way. Uh, and yeah, it's quite tense at times, but also very entertaining and often quite amusing in a dark humour kind of way. Also, even though this film is billed as a erotic thriller, as I said, uh, Bloomquist never goes too far down the avenue. He never pushes it beyond the, the boundaries of taste. So even during a sex scene that we see, uh, we, we don't really see anything. So we never come around the front, it's all done from the back. Um, you know, it's, it's very lowly lit. So yeah, I, I feel like we, we, we keep in good taste. And as a result, 
it allows us to stay focused on the characters and the story rather than titillation and, and that kind of thing. So if you're someone who's not really seen movies of this ilk, if you're just someone who goes and sees all the Hollywood blockbusters and you're looking to check out something that is more independent, maybe not of, a, of those kind of budgets, I'd say this is a pretty good place to start. It shows you what can be achieved, you know. I think this more than holds its own with that Hollywood stuff, you know. Uh, yeah, so I give this a four out of five. Uh, and yeah, you can catch it now on Amazon. Uh, it has been released exclusively through Amazon. So yeah, go over, find it and give it a rental. I think, yeah, you, there's, there's certainly worse things you could do with your time. Highly recommend it. Uh, but yeah, if you have seen this film, I'd like to know what you thought about it. Uh, comment below, let me know your thoughts, and until next time, cracking.